I am LJ Williamson, and with me right now is Mitchell Englander, candidate oh, yes. for City Council. Yes, well, and thank you for putting this together and getting the message out to voters. I think it's very important in this election on March 8th to share our opinions and uh, talk about the future the, of our communities and, and the neighborhoods in, in District 12. Thanks. Okay. So, um, so for those who don't know, can you give the viewers a brief uh, back introduction of yourself, your background, your qualifications for the position? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was born and raised here in the San Fernando Valley, and I've been active pretty much my entire adult life in civic and, and philanthropic um, activities. I serve on over a dozen, a dozen nonprofit boards, including uh, and the fact that I'm a reserve LAPD officer out of Devonshire. So when I'm not um, working as a chief of staff and then serving on all these nonprofit boards, I actually put on a gun and a uniform and a badge and patrol our streets because I care a lot about the community. Uh, I was born and raised out here by a single mother who struggled and we lost our house over foreclosure, which a lot of families are going through now. And we ended up moving in with an uncle of mine who really took me under his wing and he became sort of my mentor um, since my father moved out when I was five and uh, he was a disabled vet. And my uncle was later killed by two gangbangers in Canoga Park, which because of all the things that I've been through, I want to give back and make the community a better place. Um, I've been very active. I was involved in the Valley Secession Campaign uh, and a leader in that as well. And I've been active in fighting pretty much my entire adult life to make sure the Valley gets its fair share of services. Okay, so the Valley Secession Campaign, and that's what created the Neighborhood Councils. That's where that came out it of. It did, yes. And I know that there's a vote coming up about funding for Neighborhood Councils. How do you plan to... Uh, to go with well, that. I'm a strong proponent of neighborhood councils. I'm really proud of where the campaign's going right now. So far, we have 15 neighborhood councils in our council district. That's more than any other councilmatic district in the entire city of Los Angeles. It's about a fifth, in fact, of all the neighborhood councils. And I've been endorsed now by 15 current and former neighborhood council presidents, including many other neighborhood council members. And I've started uh, as a chief of staff many years ago, the Neighborhood Council Service Organization with CD12. So we meet regularly with neighborhood councils. Neighborhood councils know far better than most what's going on in their community, what's happening on every single block, um, particularly in local issues, whether it's crime or quality of life, planning issues. And so I'm a firm believer in supporting neighborhood councils. So even in our difficult budgetary climate right now in Los Angeles, you're, yeah. you're, you plan to maintain funding for them. Um, and, and, and if you talk about that and you think about what we're getting out of the funding that we put into neighborhood councils, it's minuscule for what we get in return. We're talking about volunteers that serve on these boards that are active. In fact, in Granada Hills, I help them get an office. Uh, I'm working on the same thing in Chatsworth. I've been very active and supportive of neighborhood councils because not only do they volunteer their time, but they talk to their friends, they talk to their neighbors, they vet the issues. And all that time they put in is, is really a drop in the bucket um, in terms of the financial cost and what we get in return. Okay, so, so. you know, you're, you're the man to beat in this race. You're the presumptive <laughs> front runner. You're, you know, you've, you've got the inside track being the chief of staff for the current and outgoing city councilman. And, but the knock on you for that is, well, if we just elect Mitch Englander, we're just getting more of the same, more of the same, uh, letting developers run roughshod over our part of the valley, and um, we, don't, we don't get the change that's, that's, that's so needed here with um, people are, are dissatisfied about a lot of uh, development issues, about the situation with Sunshine Canyon, mm -hmm. about traffic. So how do you, how do you answer those Well, the, the answer is my record. Um, if we start talking about the things I've done, first of all, I've never worked for an elected official. Um, so to say that it's wouldn't the same old, same old, uh, Greg Smith is the first elected official I have ever worked for. I've never run for office. And I understand there's a lot of candidates, perennial candidates that have run for office many times for many different seats. So I sort of question that as well. Um, and if you look at the endorsements I have, it's really the community leaders that have endorsed the campaign, which I'm really proud of. But more importantly, the record, the fact that in the last seven years, uh, the things that I've worked on, that we've created more parkland uh, in, the, in the 12th district in the last seven years than we have in the last 70 years, um, that we've provided funding and uh, economic development for local companies, that we've paved more streets every single year in, in, in District 12 than any council district in the city of Los Angeles. Um, the, the fact that we fought, and I single-handedly went out there 
um, with the support of the councilmen, to build a coalition to fight the largest proposed development in the history of Los Angeles, Los Lomos, which was going to build 5,800 homes at the confluence of five major freeways. And I went out there for years and fought against that, against 18 lobbying firms, uh, and we won that vote. In fact, they sued us for $100 million, and I went out there and found outside counsel because I didn't trust downtown. I didn't trust the city attorney's office at the time and found outside counsel to represent us and we won in the Supreme Court. Um, the fact that I got involved in fighting for the expansion of Providence Holy Cross Hospital, which, you know, that was very controversial and that was a land use issue that wasn't in our district but were very directly affected. My sister passed away, um, I, and it's a quick story, but she was rushed to an emergency room after an asthma attack and the emergency room was full and they couldn't get to her in time and be because of that she lost all the oxygen to her brain and had permanent brain damage and she was a school teacher and I took care of her for 10 years and she passed away in my arms and I vowed then that I would get involved and do something more uh, for hospitals. We've closed 18 hospitals in the last 25 years in this region. I fought against LAUSD buying Granada Hills Hospital because I felt not that we don't need schools but the highest and best use for that location was a hospital. And when we lost that, I went and got involved in Providence because we were adding 155 new beds uh, to a region where we desperately need it. When I found out that we need after school programs and we need to get involved in intervention and prevention programs, I knew it wasn't the city and the taxpayers that were responsible for it. So I got involved in the Police Activities League and we opened up the PAL Center on Wilbur and Parthenia where I was the cornerstone fundraiser and went out and raised three and a half million dollars to build an at-risk youth center. And these are kids that would be in gangs or on drugs and instead they have after-school programs and mentoring programs and tutoring programs and that community is safer. We are safer because of that and I'm going to continue to do those things. Okay, so um, you know since this is a local website that I do yes. and I, I'd like to just tell me what do you think is if you could just pick one issue that's really important in your mm -hmm. view to Council District 12 that we're up against, um, what would you pick and, and tell us about your views on it? Well, the issue, the, the, the true issue, the heart of the issue is um, bringing local jobs here to, to the 12th District. We have the largest M-Zone properties, uh, light industrial manufacturers in Northridge and Chatsworth. And one of the issues that's near and dear to my heart, the, heart, the number one issue is public safety. And if we don't have the money to fund police officers, you know, that's why I'm not taking matching funds. Uh, we have $12 million set aside in the city for matching funds. That's 120 new police officers. I just don't think it's right to use taxpayer money to run for office at a time where we are on fiscal restraints. We're on fiscal life support in the city of Los Angeles right now. So I've worked for the last three years to create an enterprise zone in Chatsworth and Northridge. It was just approved uh, by the state of California, and I'm really proud of that. And that is like it's 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 the equivalent of having a business in Nevada that's the tax benefit and being here in Los Angeles and so unless we can create good paying local jobs um, then we don't have the revenue to make sure the core services are funded that's the biggest issue facing us is the budget deficit in the city of Los Angeles where we can't provide core services it's got to stop um, we have to have fiscal responsibility in the city we have to fund first and foremost those quality of life issues that are affecting us every day and whether it's traffic or public safety or planning or public works, trimming our trees. I mean this is a windy part of the city and the city doesn't have the money to trim the trees and they're falling on people's homes. We've got to stop that. It's ridiculous and it's out of control. Okay. Um, you know speaking of issues that it connected with what you were just speaking about, mm -hmm. um, a public safety issue and a quality of life issue, is the in this neighborhood a, there are a lot of people are concerned about the issue of group homes right and tell me a little bit about your views on on that matter and what you would do to kind of uh, ease some of the rancor around that okay uh, and there's a proliferation of these group homes these boarding homes these community care facilities why they call them the community care facilities I don't know because they're not part of the community and they certainly don't care I'm not talking about the ones that are reputable. I'm not talking about New Horizons or Tierra del Sol. I'm talking about these sober living homes that aren't technically sober living. They don't have 12-step programs. They don't have supervision. And they, they, they end up uh, setting up shop 
in our neighborhoods right next door to you and you couldn't fathom having one of these next door to you. So what I did is I put together a CD12 task force working with county probation, the Los Angeles Police Department, our senior lead officers, um, as well as uh, the public safety officers of the city of Los Angeles and building and safety. And we went out after, there's three homes that have been uh, the, the worst in the city of Los Angeles here in Granada Hills. And I'm happy to say we just closed one of them successfully with this task force. And at the same time, um, and the other two uh, have cleaned up uh, their homes as well. The, the, uh, on the other part of that is we're fighting for a new ordinance, the Community Care Facility Ordinance. Well, that won't solve all the problems. That will give the city the tools to ensure we can go after these and protect our neighborhoods. These do not belong in single family zones. They don't belong in your neighborhood and we need to shut them down and make sure that they don't operate again. I think the question on a lot of voters' minds is, why should I vote for you as opposed to anyone else? Go. Okay, and I'm asking you to vote for me. Visit my website, www.mitchenglander.org. Uh, take a look at who's supporting me. Take a look at who I am. Right now, if you look at the city, and I will go back to this, we are on fiscal life support. We need somebody that's got experience, that knows how to get things done, that has a proven track record, that knows how to navigate the process. Uh, when you have surgery, when you look for a heart surgeon, and you're putting your life in somebody's hands, you want somebody that has experience. Uh, to become a, a heart surgeon, you've got to go through medical school, you've got to go become a resident and an intern. You know, I've got the experience, uh, and I show that I can get things done. I've fought, again, the largest land use projects ever proposed in the history of the city, and successfully saved our communities from that. I've been in the trenches working to fight for our fair share for many, many years, uh, and I'll hit the ground running. We don't have time uh, right now, for, I believe in on-the-job training, uh, but we don't have time to elect somebody who doesn't understand how to navigate and get things done. The other part of that is, I'm really proud, not only of the, the local endorsements, but other elected officials have endorsed me as well. And the last time I checked, you have to have eight votes to get anything done in the city council. And what that means is if you want to go down there and just fight city hall and get everything done, and I want to do that for our community, you also have to be able to count to eight to get anything done. If you try to lead a parade with nobody behind you, it's called taking a walk. So you need support, you need to be able to build coalitions, you need to be able to work with people. And I'm really proud of my track record in building those coalitions to get things done for our community. Mitch Englander, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, I truly appreciate it. And make sure you visit Giga Granada Hills regularly. Thank you. Yes, he's right.